Welcome friends. I am continuing a uh, tutorial series on IBM integration uh, bus. So today I'll uh, do my first code example. I'll create an integration service and we'll try to expose a web service using soft power HTTP and trying to do simple mapping. Okay. So before uh, uh, I start, let me give a little bit uh, overview about various uh, technical concept involved when creating a web service. So uh, for this web service, one fundamental thing to understand is the XML. Okay. This XML is a, you know, uh, extensible markup languages. So it is quite popular in communicating between enterprise application. Along with XML, you need to know a couple of things. In this tutorial, I won't explain in detail, but I'll create all these artifacts so that you can get a feel of it. And you can suggest me or uh, request for me some detailed uh, video tutorial on that uh, concept. So I'll create separately. So WSTL and uh, SOAP. Okay. So these four things are uh, important to get started with web service invocation. So this XML is nothing but some set of uh, English language markups where the data can flow from application A to B. Okay. And this XSD is a XML schema definition. Means whether the information, for example, if we pass ID or name, so whether ID is a number or string or boolean, so that kind of uh, type notation will be defined over in this uh, XSD definition. And WSTL is a contract or the set of services name and operation name or, or the path of that URL uh, which can be accessed by application 8 while connecting to B or the host name, port number, those kind of information will be available in this web service definition language. And this hop is the exactly message we pass over this wire from A to B. This contain, you know, a envelope. And in the envelope, we have header section and we have body section. Inside this body, your actually data will, you need to pass. Okay, so I'll, I'll when I demonstrate, uh, it would be a little bit clear. So let us uh, straight go to the code and create those, you know, modules. So we can create a new integration service. Okay, here we can specify the name. SOAP integration service. Okay, or we can, uh, we may give, uh, let's say, let us give as a little bit functional wise, employee service which makes more uh, sense in domain. So description, you can give anything as for your need. I am keeping it as blank. Define itself my uh, integration uh, editor. That means I'll create my own interface by, uh, by myself from the very beginning. So I'm not importing, which is already available. Okay. So uh, where do you store your new interface definition? We can, uh, usually it is the best practice to create a library to store this uh, artifacts but uh, um, I, I would like to focus on just end-to-end -end testing in a very simple fashion so i'll just copy in this one project only okay so i'll click on the finish okay so this comes up so if you notice over here uh, in the left hand side this is my service here this is the resource section where your uh, WSDL file I explain and that uh, schema will be created. So an empty WSDL is created uh, of this operation one. Uh, if you see define, we will change it for the simplicity. It created operation one and input one, input two. That is the reason this uh, employee service or WSDL is uh, got created for us. Okay, but we can change over here in this uh, UI editor. This UI is uh, coming from you know, uh, integration designer or WebSphere ESP. So they have a better way to create or manage XSD schema. So, and this is whatever the folder structure you can see, this is a known as namespace, okay? Namespace is uniquely identifier or grouping together schema. 
So if you see over here, this is a XZD also created. And this inline schema, all will be referenced by each other. So for our simplicity, this all schema file and WTL created. But no worries, we'll you know manipulate from very beginning. And this is the interface uh, integration service description. So here we can see operation in this service. So this is already swap over HTTP binding by default. This is the operation name. Our service name is employee service error handling. Okay. But today we'll just do end-to-end -end testing. Before we move anything else, uh, let me create a schema definition for us. Okay. So let me see whether we can manipulate this. Okay. Mm. Probably instead of touching, let me create one more schema by myself in the schema file itself. New. And we can choose other okay xml schema file okay this is what i would like to create if you see over here there are a lot of other options available you go to this xml which is automatically selected and there is xml schema file okay i may create some other tutorial to explain about dtd xml excel those are a little bit different related concept to xml but let me create a xml schema file we will click next we choose this folder I think we can create another folder to organize for me it is fine my schema I'll give name is employee okay uh, click finish okay so this is the editor to create uh, XSG usually if you are more comfortable so you can write uh, all the uh, you know schema definition over in this uh, notepad all this because end of the day or uh, all are simple text information not binary that you can't see the source code so you can definitely see the source code and if you are already aware of how to create you can create it but let us try to use a this editor to do it quickly so elements and types let us create a type okay so we can add simple type, complex type. Let me create a complex type, means which is a collection of other types. So the name I will give employee type. If I double click it, so the editor will come up. So we can right click, add element I can do. So employee, this is name we have. We can have city. Or for example, we have ID. Let me change it to from string to we can change any type boolean date double float another thing. So let me change to integer. So if you see I have created a type. So if you click on the source view, we can see this definition. It create this complex type employee type and this is a sequence name city and ID string here also we can copy and paste and we can create as many as time if you prefer in that manner it is up to you now let me create for example this is an element right which is a type i'll create two ele element using this editor which will be of type this employee type okay so for example create element employee request Okay, sorry, uh, let me create this or I'll right click here, set type, browse it, employee type. Okay, similarly, let me create another element. This is my employee response. You can create as many, you know, uh, let me browse it employee type okay so this two type may be different for your use case okay so you can create schema where you can create address type right and you can create employee information company information and all all sort of different different you can organize but for the simplicity i have created the type over here and i have created two element both are different is the same if you see over here this I, as I said, right, this is exactly same. Only this is the type 
is different. And if you see this TNS is namespace. TNS usually for from a target namespace, right? So it is defined over here. This is quite important in XML domain, but it is automatically generated by this tool. So we uh, no need to worry at this moment. And now let us come to this uh, editor. If you are uh, not sure how it is coming, if you double click here, even though you close it, if you double click here, so service tab, and if you click on the interface, it will come up. So we can uh, say get employee details. Okay. So here we change this our operation name. And now we can browse this type and we can select employee type. If you select employee type, if you notice, only this type will be changed. So we can modify whatever we like over here. But for example, if you want to use this element type, so employee request, does this name also will get changed. So it is all up to you, but this is a type is referring to employee request, but it is again referring to that employee type. So let me, because we will create, so it is all your preference, preference, but better to follow a consistent practice across the board. Okay, so we have defined. So this is the name of the service. This is the name of this operation. And this is the WHDL location. So, and I'll, I'll create some other tutorial to explain about the fault. Here you can create another operation. Here one way operation you can create. This is for just collapsing. And this you can add input. You can add multiple input by the way. And you can add output, multiple output also possible. And we can add fault. But for us, let us keep it simple, straightforward. Okay, so this is fine. Now let us click over here. If you click here, the, it will redirect us to the message flow. Okay. Okay, so this is the message flow is embedded. So if you see our flow here, this is the uh, message flow. So these are the sub flows already defined by us. I think we are in this request response sub flows. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, now what do we do? We'll use a graphical mapping. I'll create several other tutorial to explain about ESQL. One programming language uh, used widely for this message broker. But for the simplicity sake, I'll use this graphical mapping. We'll just uh, drag and drop here. This is graphical mapping and I'll join them. This I'll join it. I'll create uh, other tutorials to explain about the file handling errors. Just, just have a persons. So one step ahead. So if you double click, we can give any name or this name should be fine enough. So, okay, we'll select the input and output. We'll select this employer request. Okay. And uh, here we select employee response. This is a domain. There are several other domain, different, different type, XML namespace. So use this domain XML LN uh, SC and I'll, you know, when we do more tutorial, I'll explain in detail about different domain. So there are a lot of concepts to understood, remember. Okay. For example, in the request, let's assume even the type is same, let's assume we only got the ID. So I'll just map to the ID to ID. So whatever we pass and the, in the name, I'll try to hard code for this sake of the demonstration purpose. Steve Jobs in the city. Okay. So we have created uh, our map. So it's very simple, right? We completed our development purpose. And slowly I'll explore mapping elaborately and all this thing. So this is uh, completed. So we can, you know, drag and drop this into this default. So this module will be deployed. If any error, it will point. Otherwise it will success this time. 
So we can click on this start flow exercise to record the path. It will also st starting so we can able to test it. Okay. Now send a message to the flow here input message. If you right click, click on the input. The interesting thing over here is that this uh, particular thing will be created for us. So let us change one, two, three, four, five. Because other thing I'm not uh, mapping. So this is a soap structure. We have envelope, header is empty. We have body and this is the operation name, label element, get details. And if you see the return will be coming as get uh, employee detailed response. I'll show you where it is. And this is our element name. And these are the various attributes. So if you click send. So see, uh, this is the way progress information is getting executed. Sending. So you can again navigate the message over here. And if you click save. So whatever the transformation we have done, it will be shown over here. Uh, name Steve Jobs, California, but unfortunately ID is not coming. Let me see why it is that situation. Okay, so there is a uh, little bit slight error over here. When we, I have explained, right, the soap message is starting after body from get employee details. Uh, the, under that we have employee request, okay. In the right hand side, we no need to map the above one, it will be as by itself. But in this case, we have to, whenever we're creating maps, we have to select get employee details. Okay. This is the uh, element is referred by. Now let us, uh, let me test it. So if I send a message, if I click over here, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Click send. Okay. So here we have response. See employer response and all these thing coming so if we don't want this employer response and we want to one level up we have to map on that so from body this will uh, whatever we are getting the request right we have to map this if you see in this body after this body it is the data is coming from get em, get employer details but sometimes if you don't want to pass under body if it is only coming so we can map this directly but because in our SOAP request, it is coming from get employee details. So have a watch on that. And in the output also, you ensure that what exactly you want to send. In this case, I am sending only in the response. But sometimes you want to send some is parent element. So I'll again cover and I'll uh, dissect the WHDL SOAP and uh, schema for you. So which will make the life more easier and simple. So thanks very much for watching this video. So I'll keep on creating several other videos to help you guys. If you like my videos, please click like. Also subscribe to it so that you will get update about my new videos. So thanks again. Have a wonderful day ahead. Bye-bye.